But we are gonna get black garlic from here. You can buy it in two different forms. Kevin's love for Philadelphia has produced two restaurants so far, and I can't wait to see what he comes up with next. He gets the Northeast, he gets the culinary world. You can buy it in two different forms. It's roasted over a certain length of time, mm -hmm. so the garlic becomes black, and it's this really sweet, delicious, kind of unique flavor. Oh my god, it smells so different. So good. So what else do we need for the day? Chilies, kefir, and the black garlic, and I think okay. it should be good. Once Leah has the ingredients she needs, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump across the East Village to Pig and Cow, and we're ready to make this new dish come to life. That is a big octopus. It's not that big. I mean, it's like a full six <laughs> But soon enough, it'll be a delicious feast, and the first step towards a finished product, tempering the octopus in hot water. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get it in, let it all go down. Now it's my turn. Yeah. Okay, let's get this. So you want to grab it from, like, the base right here. Watch out. Oh, is that the eyeball? Yeah, don't squish <laughs> It's Fine. really slimy. Here we go. This one's a little bigger than the other. Yeah. This is like fog and crap. <laughs> the next thing I'm gonna have to do is I just weigh it down to make it sure it's completely submerged. Where does the black garlic come into play? In the vinaigrette. So while Leah grills the scallions to bring out the flavor, I combine our black garlic with kefir lime, chilies, oil, and citrus to create our dressing. So that black garlic it turned it like completely dark. Yeah, I like that it gives it a really unique color. This is the salad. The salad. So <laughs> many flavors going on right now. I know, it's a lot going on in the dish, but they all seem to work together. Oh, yeah. Leah is very confident in her cooking, and it's so cool to see her just create this new dish. Do you even use the ends of the legs, or just the meaty part? I use everything. I really like it, because it gets the end part gets crispy. really crispy. You can see how tender it is. And the last step is just to garnish it with some more black of uh, the black garlic, yeah. The black garlic is a star. I can't wait anymore. That is delicious. I have some more food for you to try. Oh, what are these? Okay, so this is um, the Suck House Soy. It's a curry noodle soup. This is a new dish that we're trying out at the restaurant. It's a winter citrus salad. 
bite after bite after bite, it just keeps getting better. I didn't know how black garlic would taste, but I think with that, the chilies and the lime juice, yeah. everything complements each other so well. Thank you. That was the goal. And like you said, I love that these ends are crunchy. Yeah, that's my favorite part. Yeah, it's like crunchy french fries. <laughs> Chef Leah is a true culinary artist, and these works of art are just the beginning. But not only are you an amazing chef, you're a true businesswoman, so congratulations on all your success. Thank you. Vegan Cow is the best. Kevin gets it. He gets Billy, he gets the Northeast, he gets the culinary world. never attended culinary school, but always wanted food to be a part of his life. He now owns the hottest restaurant in LA and is credited with sparking a culinary revolution in a city that thrives on creativity. I got inspired by sustainable agriculture, so I got really politically motivated to be a part of the tip of the spear in terms of buying and supporting local farms and kind of spreading the gospel of local food. Our philosophy is really about minimalism. Uh, we really don't want a lot of complexity. We don't want a lot of muddled flavors. It's really about two or three really beautiful ingredients presented very simply. Ari has taken his dirt-to-table philosophy to new levels by teaming up with an organic in Venice to supply his downtown venue, Alma. Courtney, Ari, this garden is so beautiful. It's a really stunning place, like a little paradise for us. Tell me a little bit about your garden-restaurant dynamic. Every day we're getting the fresh vegetables straight from the garden into the kitchen, so they don't see a refrigerator, they're coming in, they're hitting the plate that night. What I grow and nurture in the garden is definitely dictated by seasonality, but it's also dictated by Chef Tamor's menu. So what are some of the things you guys have now? Well, right now we've got some beautiful French varietal cabbage and some turnips. I hope so. These are going to make it to our plate tonight. So what do we have here? Some bronze fennel that I'm going to have you harvest mm -hmm. for us. And you're just going to take right near the base of the plant and just cut them off. And here, why don't you try a little bit? Oh, yeah. Wow, it has so much flavor. This is called lemon geranium. Chef, what are you using this on the menu? I know we're using it on one of our desserts. Oh, the dessert. Yeah. Really, I would have never guessed yeah. that. You make a frozen marshmallow with it. Are we going to be making that today? We could. <laughs> that feels good. <laughs> now it's time to put these fresh veggies to work. At the Uber Hot Alma, which despite being located in the hustle and bustle of downtown Los Angeles, is warm, intimate, and inviting. So this is the only dish on our tasting menu that never changes, and it's a frozen duck liver. Frozen duck liver. And it's the liver dish for people who hate liver. Cool, I'm excited to try this. All right. What do we do first? First thing you're going to do is take these carrots and dump them right into that little mixing bowl. You're going to add a tiny pinch of salt. Take a little bit of this carrot vinaigrette and squeeze it right into the uh, carrot. Then at this point, we're going to start freezing the liver. What are we freezing the liver with? This is liquid nitrogen. It's super cold. It's not really dangerous as long as you don't stick your whole hand yes. inside of it. Oh my god. And what does this nitrogen do to the liver aside from freezing it? It's going to turn it into little liver granules. Now, since Alma is known for its impeccable presentation, we need to dress up the plate with a little maple puree and some homemade coffee granola before we add our frozen liver. We're going to now break up our liver, so take this oh spoon and just... So it's crunchy. Yeah, but then it'll also melt, so it's a little like a savory ice cream. Liver ice cream? That sounds odd, but I definitely trust Ari, I think. The last thing you're going to do is you're going to use these tweezers and pick off a couple little stems of the fennel that we picked earlier. And that's it. And that's it. All right, so I get to taste them. Yeah. I feel like there's going to be so much flavor. Mmm. 
It's funny because I don't taste too much of one ingredient. No. And this duck liver is really crunchy. I think I might like duck liver. Maybe just your duck liver. It's the convert now. So this is delicious. Now, how about that dessert? For sure. <laughs> This is the lemon drink, geranium. Yeah. So that's the sorbet. This is the marshmallow. Yeah, the frozen marshmallow. Wow. That is to die for. Thank you. That's real lemon, isn't it? Yeah, Meyer lemon. We use the pith and the peel as well as to get the oh. full lemon flavor. Yeah, that's like yeah. really flavorful. Yep. Les is definitely more when it comes to the dishes at Alma, and with the help of his A-team, Chef Ari turned a simple philosophy into the new wave of California cuisine. So you guys are so creative here, and it's delicious. Awesome. So, uh, cheers to Alma. Thank you for coming by. Kevin drew from all his experiences and launched the wildly successful Spraga restaurant. First of all, I want to talk to you. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Tonight, we're celebrating the young guns of the culinary world. And this Philadelphia-based young gun, Kevin Spraga, credits his success to the support he received at a young age. I was pretty young when I first realized that I wanted to cook. Both of my parents had a lot of influence on, on me becoming a chef. My, my dad being a baker, my mom working with him in the bakery. Most kids were out playing sports or watching cartoons on a Saturday morning. I was watching PBS, I was watching the cooking shows. And that really just kind of evolved into high school and then college and then, then to a career. That career was given a jump start when Kevin won Top Chef season seven. I've been dreaming, thinking, living and dying for this meal for the last couple months. This is it. My experience on Top Chef was really life-changing. The show just gave me the confidence to follow my heart and do what I do. It just taught me to, to go for it, like go big or go home. And one of the people who told him to go big was Kevin's mentor, Chef George Perrier, whose iconic restaurant, a layback fin, was a staple in Philly for over 40 years. It was never a doubt in my mind that Kevin would become one of the premier chefs on the coast. I wanted to, to see what perfection was all about. My parents took me to Lebec Fin for my first time. To this day, I still have a, a side menu from that day. And that's when I got to meet Whoa. Chef George Perrier for the first time. And then in 2004, I had the opportunity to work for him, to be a chef for him. He's awesome. He's a legend in Philadelphia. He was like me. Never take himself too seriously. I need to shrink my chef. And I need a robot, maybe my mind would open. <laughs> he comes into the restaurants all the time, not only to support, but critique. He has no problem still putting me in my place and telling me when something's wrong. You can't ask for a better mentor than, than Chef Ferrier. from all his experiences and launched the wildly successful Spraga restaurant, which has an ever-changing menu. And today, Kevin is flexing his culinary muscles, starting with the hamachi jicama salad. First thing we're going to start with is this uh, beautiful hamachi loin. Slice it down into three or four slices. We have this awesome jicama here. We're going to slice this down, peel it, and then shave it nice and thin on top of there. It's really inspired by the flavors of Southeast Asia. You have the uh, beautiful curry oil, you've got the coconut milk, it's sweet and sour. With the jicama shaved, he adds some cucumber cubes, sliced jalapenos, and now we're ready for the finishing touches. Next is the coconut milk. And then lastly, a little bit of lime juice. We have these beautiful edible flowers. Not only do these look great, but they actually taste good. They add a lot of flavor to the dish. And there you have it. The door. See? The main course is a surf and turf, Spraga style. This dish, this is one of my favorites. Pork belly hot, crispy and calamari tentacles that are hot, but then a cold ceviche with it. Right here we have a, uh, a roasted pork belly. Next thing we're gonna do is heat up our vegetables. We have uh, English peas and snap peas. Pork belly is delicious. It's the mother to bacon. Why not love it? With a little bit of uh, squid ink. Pork belly right there. We have the peas. And if your mouth isn't watering yet, Kevin also adds some ceviche and crispy hot calamari. And this is your finished dish, surf and turf. 
If you go to a Kevin Straga restaurant and don't have dessert, you're not getting the full dining experience. And today, it's cheesecake. My father was known for his cheesecake, so having an awesome cheesecake on, on our menus is really, really important. So I'm going to start with the cherries. We're actually going to make a cherry sauce. While that's cooking, we'll plate up the rest of the dish. We're going to start with the cheesecake. We have a little bit of a cherry puree. Now that these are ready, they're going to go right on top. Down below, we have a little ice cream. This is awesome ginger ice cream. And then we have this uh, sugar garnish. We call it glass. And that's the finished dish. Kevin's love for Philadelphia has produced two restaurants so far, and I can't wait to see what he comes up with next. Kevin gets it. He gets Philly, he gets Northeast, he gets the culinary world. Yeah. As far as Young Gun Chefs go, Sam Gorenstein is hot as a pistol in South Florida, where he launched My Ceviche. Cuisine inspired from his childhood in Colombia, the rapidly growing chain of fast style restaurants serves almost raw fish. Ceviche, very simple dates. Raw seafood, fresh hand squeezed citrus, put those two together, add some seasoning, and you have ceviche. My Ceviche started three years ago with a small takeout window in Miami Youth Hostel. But business was so good, they quickly opened two more locations in Miami. And are about to open restaurant number four in Coral Gables, which is where I caught up with the man behind the Ceviche revolution, Sam Gorenstein. It was great to see how Sam is putting together his restaurant, but I'm ready to see how he puts together a plate of ceviche. Here's our uh, My Ceviche, South Miami. This is how it's gonna look like. Yeah, I can totally see now what you were talking about. So is that the ceviche bar? Exactly, so you can see what how we do things. And today, Sam is gonna train me to be a ceviche chef. So now we're in our prep kitchen, and the first step is uh, you gotta wear my ceviche hat, be part of the team. Wait, we're not cooking the fish. It's completely raw, and it's gonna get marinated and coating the acid of the lime. Wow, limes are done, now what? Now we're gonna start squeezing. It's like liquid bowl. So how many limes do you guys go through a day? 200, 250 pounds of limes. You guys are keeping the lime farmers in business. After squeezing a bunch of limes, we head to the ceviche bar. The idea popped in my mind. We got a hold of a really tiny shack in South Beach. Concept to cost. It's just a walk-up counter. Just no walk. chairs or tables. No chairs or tables. And it blew up. It's the lunchtime rush and the people are waiting, so I need to get ceviche. First, I have the fish, then some onions, tomatoes, cilantro, and jalapenos. So now, one of the most important parts is obviously seasoning. And the seasoning is oh, going to come a lot of, from the sea salt uh, and the traditional juice. And this, what is the traditional juice? That's lime juice that you squeeze, uh -huh. and then we put some secret ingredients in there. Ooh, I love secret ingredients. More of this. Yeah, don't be skimpy. A little bit more? More? Okay. Yeah, there you go. Don't be skimpy. That's good. For all the juices. Exactly, all the good stuff. And it's ready. Lock it up, and your first My Ceviche order nice. ready to go. It is busy right now. It is right now. It is around here. Isn't it, it is around here, you know? In addition to healthy food, Sam has a grander plan for my ceviche. Just because we're making a ceviche in a minute, two minutes, that doesn't mean that it's not high quality. No, this is like the beef all locally sourced, fresh. As soon as you grab a bite, you're hooked on it forever. I really enjoy seeing their smiles on their faces once they take their first bite and see how their eyes pop up over there. Yeah. Wow. Working hard in the kitchen, and now I finally get to try this. Right? Not only you, but I'm so hungry. Mm. This is delicious. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I 
doesn't really taste acidic. You taste the lime juice and the orange a little bit, but it's perfectly balanced. This would be such a hit in California. You have to okay. bring it to California. We will. We will. Hopefully soon I'll be there every day. Thank you. I'm super excited for you. I can't wait to see what the future holds. And cheers to Young Gun Chef. Cheers.